Well, it's been a while now since I produced a Cheetah 3D tutorial, so I'm back and we're going to have a crack at creating some realistic looking terrain. Um, I say realistic, the one that you're looking at there looks like some kind of weird planet that doesn't exist. Or maybe Mars, I don't know, I've never been. Um, what happened with this was, I was I fancied creating some terrain, I was having a little dig around the Cheetah 3D forums and I found an old post by um, Frank Beckman. Um, if you've been on the forums you'll know who Frank is because he knows absolutely everything there is to know about Cheetah so thanks go out to Frank for this one. Um, I'll post a link to Frank's text text based walkthrough of this um, just to help anyone out who prefers that method as well. Um, but yeah big thanks to Frank for this one so let's get cracking. So I've got Cheetah open, let me just delete that material. So I've got Cheetah open, um, there's a couple of ways you can start this scene. I'm actually going to start with a plane. Um, a one, width of one, depth of one. That's alright, I'm just going to zoom right in. I'm going to need a hell of a lot more sections than that. Let's go for 150 sections. Let's go for 100 sections. And 100 the depth as well, That basically what that just does is gives us a good bit more geometry so and just have a look around you can see we've got a lot more polygons now to work with not that great if you're doing something for gaming but if you're just working on stills something like that then good to go so to that plane we'll add uh, a displacement a modifier um, and what that does is it uses a texture and I read something earlier on actually saying that displacement maps are basically like bump maps on steroids that's a really good way to describe it actually watch um, we're going to need an image editor for this uh, I think I've already got Pixelmator open um, so we'll create a new new texture there um, background colour white, texture size 512 by 512 file type I'm going to create mine as a JPEG I'm going to call it relief, you can see I've already got one there um, it's weird, Pixelmator hasn't changed the file format there, I'm going to have to do that manually. <coughs> Sorry, not Pixelmator, it's Cheetah, it's not changed that. Um, anyway, here we go. Save it with that. Right, so it's created me a new texture and it's applied that relief. Now at the moment that relief's all white, um, which is pretty useless to us. So in Pixelmator, I'm going to open an existing image and I'm going to open relief. If you're using Photoshop, by all means use Photoshop. Um, I'm going to add a filter to that and I want the generator in Pixelmator clouds you know when they are in Photoshop if you use them so by adding the clouds what I've done is I've got some texture there that's I don't know, it's greys and whites, it's, it's not enough at the moment so I'm going to duplicate that layer in Pixelmator and the control click to do it in here I'm going to put that on a multiply layer and I'm going to duplicate that layer again the reason I'm doing this is because the way um, the texture map works is black is basically flat and pure white is as high as the displacement will go. So that will give us quite decent looking terrain. So I'm going to save that now. I'm going to cancel that actually. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it share, export for web. Happy with all the settings there. Call it relief again, that's all good, replace that file, done. Okay, so back to Cheetah. So instantly, our texture has updated, although it's pretty rubbish that, I mean it's, it just looks a bit bumpy, so we can really pump up the uh, offset property on that displacement map, and really start to get some, some hills. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we want it to look quite real so I'm going to leave it at 0 0.11 for now I'm just going to click on the plane options and change the smooth to font which is just works a little bit better in this environment um, that's more or less the modeling done on this one it's not really a, a modeling tutorial it's more about just getting an effect what I am going to do is you'll have seen on the render manager the one I did it looks a bit like Mars. I chucked in a couple of these lakes, um, just just for fun really, um, dead easy to add. So what I did was, I think I probably used a disk, I added a disk and you can see that's massive. 
So I'm going to scale that down by quite a lot. And then I just position that over my relief map and just let it, let it show through in places. So you can see in this area here, you probably can't see that well at the moment actually, um, just because I haven't got any textures applied, but it's just showing through here, which should look quite real. Uh, you can duplicate a couple of those, put one somewhere else maybe, um, raise it up, push it around until it starts to kind of peek through. There we go, you can see a little bit of it there. That's all right, that's enough for me. So let's have a go at getting some textures on there. The textures I used on this were all default textures. Um, I used Planet. Um, we're going to need some water, which is under the glass menu. Not sure why, but I don't know. Kind of the same. Um, so water, and I've got my planet texture. So I'm just going to throw my water onto the disks. I'm doing that in the object browser because I'm bound to miss it if I try and drop, drop it in on the uh, viewport window. And I put my planet texture onto the actual terrain. And then it's pretty much about lighting and rendering. So, lighting. Because it's an outdoor scene, there's a dead easy way to light, light outdoor scenes in Cheetah, and that's the skylight. The skylight's awesome. Um, you just get really good results out of the box. The shadows are a little bit harsh, but I think that'll work in our favour on this one. So you don't need to move the skylight, what you need to do is change the time on the skylight. And I just go by eye on this, I, I look for a time that kind of gives me the shadows that I want. So I want light hitting one side and some quite moody shadows. So we can see here we've got light hitting one side and shadows forming on the, on the hills. The other thing I'm going to add is a fog tag to the camera, and uh, that can be found under this menu here, fog. And as we add that, you've got this option here, density. As we up the density, you'll see it start to take effect on the landscape. You can just see that kicking in at the back. So just bring that in until it's just starting to fog out the background there. It's probably a little bit too close, but we'll do a test render in a minute and find out if that is too close. Um, color of the fog is quite important, actually. Uh, depending on what you've seen, I tend to use a colour from the scene. Now, this terrain at the moment, we don't actually know what colour that is because Cheetah's node based materials don't really get accurately reflected in the viewport just yet. I believe that will be coming at some point, but not just yet. And that is pretty much it. So I'm going to hit render now, get a little test render. Oh, just give me one minute. My render settings are miles too big. I'm just going to half that down to the default, which is 640, 480. Um, just for speed purposes, I'm doing a small test render for now. So, our test render's done. Sorry about the noise of my fans, by the way. Um, every time I render, my fans kick in and make a right racket. Um, yeah, our test render's done and it's starting to get there already. Um, these lakes are looking a bit wrong at the moment, but we'll worry about that in a, in a little bit. And you can see the colours are starting to come through. We've kind of got these whites, but they're looking a bit bluey. Um, so what you can do is looking at this material here, jump into the node editor, and in the gradient settings, You've got these colour options here. I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes, so I've only got one minute left. But you can basically change these colours and get something really quite different. Um, probably might be too wild with them. And just eliminate that white. I'll probably just throw in another dark red there. So we get that mask kind of vibe going on. That red's probably a little bit bright there. Gonna pull that back a little bit so you can see we're getting the preview here jump back into the 3d view and you can see it hasn't changed the color in the viewport which is a bit of a shame but i'm sure that will be fixed soon um, i'm just going to change the color of the fog to be a little bit more red there we go something like that probably not so bit duller than that it's a bit pinky and i'm going to hit render again so um, 
that's our rendering complete and it's starting to look pretty good actually notice that our lakes are still not that great and um, what tends to happen with these is you either get lucky um, like we have in the case of this one here where you get a little bit of reflection coming in from the actual terrain or you get like this one here where it's basically not reflecting anything because we've got no sky in so you can get around that by adding HDRI or just moving the lake just depending on your terrain that kind of thing I'm not going to do another render but I am going to just jump back into the model a little bit and just show you the things that you can play with so you can obviously play around with the offset value of your relief so if you're really, really hilly you can jump that right up like so you can obviously change your texture map so if you just change that in pixelmator or whatever you're using um, it will it will come through and be completely different so try some different things try out some noise that kind of thing see what happens um, what else can you do you can change the time on your skylight uh, for a different effect it's quite moody there that'd be worth a render actually I'm not going to render it right now though and you can obviously change the colors on your material um, in the gradient section now you can use completely different materials it's entirely up to you and I'd be uh, really happy if you just went ahead and changed and just run with it see where you can get with it um, but for now I'm going to leave it there I hope you picked up a few tips and let's see your renders thanks a lot guys and goodbye <laughs>